So welcome to Urbana Farmstead High Tunnel. So this is at that period of time, beginning part of March, where there's not a lot of things growing. Kind of finishing up a lot of the winter crops, and then we're moving into our spring and summer crops. Um, but I have some things, we're gonna actually make a frittata in my kitchen today, uh, using actually the asparagus. So I'm gonna pick a, some of them. I've picked some earlier today, so I'm gonna pull those out. And you can see when you pick them this young, they're so tender and they're so delicious full of nutrition. So this is going to be part of our frittata. Um, I'm also going to pick for some garnish, I'm going to pick this lovely rosemary. Rosemary is so perfect for uh, your, your nutrition. So you can use this, it's very good for your brain. If you make a tea out of it or add it into your cooking, it's very good. It's also, oh, the aroma on this is fantastic. Sometimes I'll just put a, a swig of this on in a vase and I use it inside my kitchen and it just fills the kitchen full of rosemary. So we're gonna go now, we're gonna go and uh, talk to my girls and see what kind of chicken eggs they have for us so we can make our frittata. All right, so we have 17 hens and we have 15 new chicks. And today, there they are, they left me some eggs so we can go in and use these in the frittata. All right, so now this is where all the magic happens. This is my kitchen. I love to bring food in from my garden and to make fresh food. So here's the asparagus that we picked. Uh, these are some Roma tomatoes that we grow. I love cooking with Roma tomatoes. I grow other kinds of tomatoes as well, but I think the Roma is the perfect cooking one. So we're gonna make a frittata today. We're gonna do a very simple frittata. It's one of those dishes that can be a brunch, a breakfast, or even a lunch. Uh, you serve a little side salad and you have a perfect lunch. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, this is simple. It's going to be tomatoes. It's going to be a cheese. I actually am using two types of cheeses. A nice aged white cheddar as well as Havarti. And then we're going to use these wonderful fresh asparagus. So let's just go ahead and we really don't have to do a lot on this. I'm just going to go ahead and make one inch uh, to about a half to one inch pieces of this asparagus. I've already diced up my tomatoes, so this is one tomato, and this is about three ounces of cheese already shredded. Uh, I have my parsley, which I, of course came from my garden as well, and that we're just gonna use for a little garnish after. You saw me pick up my eggs from my, my chickens out there, those beautiful hens. Uh, they provided me all kinds, so uh, you can see I get a lot of really nice eggs, and so we're gonna, we're gonna use these later on for our frittata. All right, so one thing important about making a frittata is you need low and slow. You need a little time. Um, and you need to go low because you're trying to get, you, here I'm just trying to make these asparagus a little bit tender before I put in the tomatoes and the eggs. I wanna make sure that they're cooked, but I also don't want to burn them. So I have this on a pretty low temperature. Um, and that's important. So I'm just using, I'm also using the pan is very important. I'm using a pan that even though it's uh, stainless steel at the bottom and reinforced three, three layers, but I have a little Teflon on here and it's important to have that because you're gonna slide that out later on to serve it and you don't want it to stick. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking the asparagus that we uh, cut up in half inch pieces here and I'm just letting it kind of get soft a little bit. About two minutes I'm gonna call it so you do a little bit of two minutes, then I'm gonna use um, just a pinch of my seasoning. So this is um, salt with my Tuscan herb blend. Um, so again, I make a lot of my own herbs because uh, herb blends, because I grow the, them in the garden. So I'm gonna give just a little pinch right now of some of the salt and the herbs. And when I feel like there's, they're just about tender, which I think is right now, I'm gonna take one Roma tomato, which I've already diced up, and I tried to remove as many of the little seeds as I could. So one uh, Roma tomato, diced up, I'm gonna go ahead and add it in now. And at this moment, I'm using just an extra virgin olive oil. This is a rosemary infused extra virgin olive oil. But when I put these tomatoes in, I wanna add a, a little tiny bit of fat. So this is about a half a teaspoon of butter and I'm gonna put that in there as well. It's a good time to do that because I'm, it's, the butter's gonna help coat the bottom of this pan when I put my eggs in. Because I'm gonna actually saute this now for about two minutes. Look at the vibrant colors on that. Is that beautiful? It says, you, you, are, you can smell, and I, right now I can smell all that asparagus 
Um, I can smell the rosemary from the infused oil, but I also can see, and, and that we use our visual uh, sense in order to really appeal to us in, in eating. So already I'm in love with this dish because of all the beautiful colors. I'm now going to add, I'm going to take it off the stove for a second because I don't want it to keep cooking. I'm going to go ahead and take my eggs. So I put six eggs in here from my sweet little hens, and I'm going to add two and a half tablespoons of heavy cream. And I'm just going to mix that up for a minute, um, just so that we can, yeah. um, so just mix it up a little bit. I'm really not going to season it at this point. I'm going to do all my seasoning in my pan. But just kind of mix it. I already beat the eggs earlier today, so I don't have to do too much more. I'm just going to go ahead now, and I'm going to add my eggs into this pan. And it's a good time, if you want, to kind of rearrange things. It's going to cook in whatever pattern that you have it right now, because you're not going to do a lot of moving it around. So I'm just going to kind of move my asparagus around so that I can have an equal distribution of tomatoes and asparagus. I'm not adding my cheese yet, you notice that. So I'm going to cook this for a minute or two and let my eggs firm up a little bit. Once I feel like they've, they're starting to firm up and I'll notice it on the outside of the pan, then I'm going to put my cheese in there. All right, so now I'm going to give it another little pinch of my herbs and my salt. And this is when I'm going to put the cheese in. So I don't want to put the cheese at the beginning because it's just going to melt down and just become a messy mess. So I like to actually put a little bit of cheese as it starts firming up around here uh, so that each person will get a little bit of cheese. And I'll just put it, kind of make it circular. And about three ounces. I, I chose to use a white cheddar and also Havarti. I like the Havarti with the asparagus. But I don't like Havarti by itself in a um, frittata. I like that this is a really aged white cheddar. So it's going to give some nice flavor for it. So I'm just going to do three ounces. I'm just going to put it right on the top there. And we're just going to let it finish up. And then we're going to do the top in the broiler. So I'm just going to keep that on for a second or two. You can see it's almost completely cooked, but that top part you never really get without leaving it in there for a long, long time, and then by then the bottom is all scorched, and so I don't like that to happen, but what we're going to do is we're going to use our broiler. I'm just going to wait a few more minutes. I usually know, so I, I use a spatula when I'm cooking this, and the whole time you notice I am keep coming around. I'm just trying to make sure that I can tell, so this is telling me a lot. When I feel like it's so it's still a little bit loose on this side. I don't know if you can see this side, but, but it's still a little loose. And until it tightens up a little bit, I don't want to put it under the broiler. So we're close, though. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and turn on your broiler, get it ready. And then you're going to finish up the top part with just a little bit of heat at the very top. So I'm going to do that now. And also, you notice that cheese, because I waited until later on uh, to put the cheese on there, it's still standing there. So when I actually get the broiler on there, it's going to do a nice little toast of that. So that's also another real nice benefit of it. All right, so you can see we now have the top part all cooked up. And it probably took about 10 minutes in the broiler. So it's really nice. We're ready to serve it, and we can serve it. If, if I was having breakfast, it'd be great with muffins or even uh, biscuits and gravy if you wanted to go that direction. Or if you're having it for brunch, there's all kinds of things you can have. A special little champagne would be good. But today we're having it for lunch, and I have a nice little side salad this will go with. You can see it's still beautiful. Look at all the colors that come through. Still have that cheese on there, but it did not disguise or take away at all from the beautiful green and the red from the asparagus and the tomatoes. Here it is. Asparagus, tomato, and cheese frittata. So it's very nice. I'm going to take a little piece of that, then I'm going to share with my friends. Um, this, I'm going to actually serve it with this wonderful fresh salad. It's mixed greens, a little bit of arugula. Um, it's just very lightly dressed with a, it's actually a white peach vinegar with an orange, blood orange olive oil. And so that's what this is. It has some blueberries and some cucumbers. Um, so we're going to have that with that. And then some nice focaccia. So the focaccia is something I make every single day. You can see focaccia, um, it is crunchy on the bottom and the top, but look how beautiful it is and spongy in the middle. So that's my focaccia. 
um, and then topped with some tomatoes and some herbs from my garden. First thing I'm gonna do is try it because I love the way it smells. I just love, I mean, all those aromas right now just coming right out there. That asparagus is coming through the strongest. Um, smells like spring, so get ready. I think we are ready for spring now with this patata. I'm gonna give it a try real quick and see what it's like. Hmm, that is delicious. So, it's still really fresh. That cheese, just using three ounces, doesn't overcome those vegetables. That's the key right there. And those fresh eggs from my free range chickens, they make all the difference. So you can do this at home, it's very fun. Uh, invite your friends over or do it for your family on a Sunday afternoon for brunch. Enjoy.